جیگر است Right guys, we're up and running with the Ben Noonan Mark Robinson match. Um, should be a cracker of a match. And there should be some um, good entertainment on the other table too. With uh, obviously Mick Hill. And I think the form player in the room at the moment, and what I've seen, is uh, Stevie Dempsey, the flying Irishman. So, should be a good matches. Certainly a quality round for the final eight. It's a good last eight, mate. Um, I just got beaten in the main draw by uh, a mate of mine from Queensland, Andy Barnett, former English player who was, who was on the um, pro circuit years ago, played for England. And, um, he just, certainly no slouch. No, he just, he just mopped up the mistakes, mate. <laughs> Robbo's had a good start here. He's, he's on the yellows. Got one tricky yellow I can see, and that's the yellow between the black and the red. Uh, the yellow next to the, um, in between the, the high, highest of the three yellows in the middle. Well, I think that'll go into. That's exactly what he's done now. Yeah. One thing I must say, I've watched quite a bit of Robbo's games, his control of his cue ball has just been beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, you just press it to mute it. Yeah. Do you need me? Robbo's just cleared that yellow side. I can't see any issues with um, with him not running this out. No, mate, I think he'll just screw back a touch here. No, goes in the middle, but I thought the red was in the way. He'll take this yellow to the centre. Just come out nicely for the for the black and the guts. He, um, I think he's he's got a pretty good record over Benny over the last couple of years. I think it was the other way around for a long time. But um, Robbo and Mick have become pretty good the premier players for Victoria over the last couple of years. Yeah, I watched Benny play his first round match today and he, he was just absolutely flying through it. They didn't really miss much. Out of all the guys, um, in Victoria and Pool, the guy with the most talent is definitely still Benny. When he's flying, you know, he's he's as good as anyone you'll ever see in the world. It just depends what Benny rolls up. Mick Hill's off to a cracker. I haven't muted myself, Dan, have I? How do I know? No, I'm, I'm live. That's on. Bye, yep. That was a master break by Robbo then too, wasn't it? I think it was a break and dish, mate. Mm. I think Mick's just got the roll in on the on the red for the roll in and the red in the middle here. He's going the other way around. Doesn't want to leave himself sitting on top of the yellow. Play this with a bit of check side, I think. Just come across. A little bit hampered. And he's played with the running side. Who do you think will win the match between Mick and Steve Dempsey? Both of them are playing very well. Listen, you've got to be a brave man to back against Mick, don't you? Yes. He never looks like he's doing anything special. He just does everything right. He certainly makes some of the some of the more difficult outs seem just absolutely ridiculously easy, doesn't he? He does, mate. And he'll he'll just wait. If there's any kind of risk or anything like that, 
he'll um, he just plays he just plays the right shots and he'll wait and wait and wait. He's a very very patient bloke, that's for sure. Benny's on the out here, he's going to screw off this red into these other couple, open them up a bit, screw back for the other reds. In the, oh, what's he done there? He somehow jumped that. I don't know if it was bad contact with the white ball or if it was he's pulled out of the shot. It was one of the two. But it looks like he's in no man's land at the moment. I don't even think he can hit that bottom. He might be able to cut that red into the middle up the, hot, up the top. Still... If you go half ball into that red, you're still going to be in trouble. On the other table, we've got Dempsey, who's just, oh no, Mick's just got one off the break. The thing is, Mick, uh, Dempsey's been playing well against the Aussie guys, but he knows how, how good Mick is. And um, he might not as be as uh, free-flowing in that match, you know? Yeah, quite possibly. Uh, I, I watched a bit of his match between... Um to, oh, the match between Stevie and Justin Sage and yeah, Justin really took it up to him and put him under a bit of pressure and you can see a couple of little chinks in the armour but you know, he, um, he closed it out quite well. He did some great finishes to finish it off. It looks like I've got Sao and Naka next to keep myself alive. He just beat Jamie Stevens. So Jamie be itching to get on the commentary. <laughs> Here's the shot here for Mick, I think. I think he's gonna he's got two options. He either screw off this yellow into the bottom of the pack, or he's gonna top this fruit. He's topping it off the rail, yeah. coming into him. He's loading up his side too. Oh automatically now. We've got a favourite for this frame in Stephen Dempsey. Christ. Shit everywhere. Well, the reds are all open. He's got a couple of dodgy-ish ones near the rails, and you've played on those feature tables already throughout this tournament. You know down the rails, they're, uh, they can be a bit of a killer. Mate, in all honesty, I'm, uh, I'm not a fan of this year's tables. I think they're very jewelry. Um, and they're not as consistent as previous years. I think JR probably could have opened them up a little bit for better, view for better viewing. Um, I know a couple of the shots that I've played where I've actually thought for sure they were in and then they've knuckled out. Mm. And, you know, what do you do? It's, it just creates negativity, you know? Yeah, we've, we've been saying right throughout the telecast, unless you hit, the, hit these rail shops absolutely sweet as a button, right, they just will not drop. Right, they just hit the jaw, just, you know, rattle, 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 and pop, come flying out. Ben just missed one in the corner to give himself a chance for the frame. And they're looking pretty prime for, um, for Marky Boy to go 2-0 up. Well, everything's open. Right. I don't see any, any dramas at all with Robbo not taking those out. Yeah, what are your thoughts on the on the 2020 time clock that's um, being used this year? Mate, I do like it, but I know at the moment it hasn't been... Um, it really hasn't been taken advantage of. Um, I don't think too many people are using it. I think once we get um, after this lot of matches, it'll definitely have to come in. We'll have to get some people reffing. Um, because there's a few players that are around there are a bit slower than others, obviously. And it's going to... Um, you know, the, those, the, the quick thinking players, the guys that are a bit more free flowing, it's going to benefit them once once it's, uh, the rules, you know, are, are used to their true force. Oh, absolutely. I've, I've been wandering around the room giving score updates throughout the tournament, and <clears throat> you still see some players you know, taking a minute, minute and a half you know, to make their shots, right, rather than the 40 seconds, which is what we're supposed to be playing under. So the. Um, as you, as you were saying, it hasn't been utilised the right way. I know a couple of the New Zealand players, um, 
well, obviously three or four of them are former English pros themselves. Um, they're a very, um, no, nothing against them, they're, but they're a slower, slower style of play, you know. Oh, Robbo. Oh, Robbo. Benny will go out here on the other table. Stevie's got a tricky one. He's got a couple options here. He's either got the red to roll down for the red into the corner next to the black to roll onto them bottom two and come up, or scroll across to the one on the rail next. Uh, he's just going to roll through. There's himself a nice angle here to just drift off the bottom rail, come back out. Although that table that they're playing on, I've, I've seen it a couple of times now, um, especially the, the match last night with Alex Renardes. It looks like Simon Singleton's just knocked uh, Michael Scarry into the right-hand side of the draw, uh, the left-hand side. Scarry's sorry. just come over to my little quarter. Another one for the Kiwis. I think, uh, uh, in saying this, the way that Dempsey's going to have to play this, I think he's got to get on the red in the middle to the left-hand side next because you want to come up naturally on that one on the rail to get onto the black. You know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. that's going to be your dead ball. Unless he's going to screw off one cushion and come out to the other side now for it. He might do that. Off the side rail back out. No. See, I'm not a big fan of this shot. No, it doesn't look like he's that high on this ball. And especially by having to really punch the ball into in order to get up to it. To get, that's right, off that last red. Yeah, I'll call it now. I reckon that re right, his next red, right, that'll rattle. Right, unless he hits it. Absolutely sweet as. Big, big chance, mate. Well, there's... Definitely been some upsets going on around the place. Jakey, um, Jakey got blessed in his match to go through. Oh, didn't he just? Um, unlucky Tamjuan, he's, he's a good player, Tamjuan. He's getting closer and closer to getting himself a decent result. Joel's just battling his way through. Quiet as a church mouse as usual. Yeah, there hasn't been a hell of a lot said about Joel <laughs> so far no, this year. He keeps, he keeps to himself, mate. This is, this is tricky. Oh, what's he done there? Yeah, and he's going to try and take this up the top corner. I think he, I think that's what he's got now. Because, you know, like, good luck trying to punch this off the rail and come out. I think he's got to take it up the top pocket. Little bit of bottom right to come across. Yeah, but that's a tough shot. On top of that, or he takes it to the top right and just screws back. And then what he does, he leaves the white half safe because he only leaves Micken off Charlie on the yellows. Here we go. No, he's missed that. No. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mick Hill factor is in the building. on table one we've got Jake McCartney and Joel playing over there I can't see what the score is uh, one nil to Jake I'm, um, I'm actually going to get off I think I'm about to play so I'll let somebody else on the screen thanks everybody All right, good luck Rusty
Yeah, you want to join me? Yeah. Okay, we've got uh, Paul Pike and Jamie Stevens jumping on the commentary here for these two matches. Welcome, Jamie. Thanks, man. If you didn't know already, folks, I am a loser. I am now out of the tournament, so I shall commentate for probably pretty much the rest of this uh, tournament. And this match was probably inevitable, to be honest, after watching Dempsey smash McCartney in the money match. And uh, Mick Hillwell obviously needs no introduction. They had to run into each other sooner or later, and here it is. Dempsey just had a cracker with um, Sage. It was 11-9 uh, or 11-8, I think. Yeah, the only, the only thing I'm interested in with uh, Dempsey, to see if he does, is if he's presented with a long, sort of difficult pot, as in, no, not dead Australian, but he's, he's got a queue sort of near the rail and he's got a bit of distance and a bit of angle. And to see if he actually makes those balls, because they're the ones I saw him a little bit suspect on. <coughs> I mean, they're never easy for anyone, but he, he that's when he exhibited the most body movement and and vulnerability. And, and here's a familiar face as well on the right side, Benny Noonan, just doing what Benny does and just, well, he's, he's actually feathering about 25 times more than what he normally does. And that's probably why he's not got good position on that. <laughs> his, his last match, he was uh, fairly hot. Uh... Mick Hill has missed. Come on, baby. He's actually smashed that, but I guess he had to pull the wide out. But... Yeah, it was an awkward shot. So, Benny here, do you think he'll check this up, Mikey, with lots of side? No, he's gone the other way. He's swung it around, which is a good shot. And you know he won't miss this. And these two, I tell you, Robbo and Benny, they've played each other a hell of a lot over the years in tournaments. And I don't, I don't know what their um, overall match sort of score is in major tournaments. I mean, this is race to 11, obviously, so it's harder to... It's, you can't sort of compare them to the race to threes and fours. But, yeah, I wonder who's ahead in these two. And uh, I'm going to say Benny, just okay. because Robbo will probably go back and watch the stream, and then he'll want to correct me if I'm wrong and tell me exactly what the score line is. Put it, put it this way, I reckon Robbo can tell you the score line. I don't reckon Benny can. Benny wouldn't care less. <laughs> Robbo will have it all in his head, mathematically sorted by the bullpoint spreadsheets and all sorts of things with how many people ran racks. And But I'm going to say Benny's, let's say they've played 20 matches, I'm going to say Benny's 12-8 up. So that way Robbo can correct me and say that it's the other way or something. That is a nice spread. I don't know who just said that, but they did not witness my dry breaks when I just played. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all about you today, Jamie. No, it, it actually was earlier. That was the thing <laughs> while I was playing. It was very much about me. Yeah, give Benny a few open uh, frames like this to get him get his arm swinging and. Yeah, there's not... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So he's actually tried to straighten it up and go into the yellow and he didn't need to. Or he actually, did he overcut it or undercut it? He's undercut it. Yeah, he's tried to pull it into the it yellow. It looked like he threw the whole shoulder at it, but I don't know. Oh, it's not like he's in any danger this particular shot with that red up uh, basically dead. Mm. The top right-hand pocket. Scary just had a uh, narrow loss too. Um... Singleton from New Zealand. I, I, may, I actually said, yes, was it yesterday? I said, talk about this Singleton fellow. I said, I rate this bloke. I reckon he's a good player. Yeah. And he's been beating everyone. He, he, apparently Dave Ewing was smashing everyone and then Singleton's gone and beaten him as well. Yeah, no, he's very good. I reckon he's the best New Zealand player I've seen in the room. What was the score, do you know? 11-10. Well, wow. Yeah, and uh, I think... Singleton was 9, 10 down. Scary had a long pot on the red that he reckoned was going straight straight for the pocket and drifted off to win the match. 
That means he rolled it, which is unlike him. Uh, it was it was an awkward shot. He had to take it long. It was tight. Oh, I understand. Yeah. So as much as um, obviously we like to watch the Victorians playing and commentate their matches, we have commentated Robbo and Benny many times, and we will very rarely get to commentate Mick Hill and Steve Dempsey. So I think we should focus on that match. And that will also give the international flavour a little bit to enjoy. I'll tell you what, two great players too, aren't they? I, like I said, I watch, I, I've already seen Steve Dempsey play from when I went over the world titles. He and plays. I knew he was a Jet. Anyone that can uh, play big money against someone like Ronan McCarthy for cash, you know he's not a dummy. I don't know how you found the table spiky, but I find them not that sort of shot there, but if the ball's sort of more in the middle of the rail and you've got to punch them down the rail, I'm finding them really tough. Yeah, that's... If you roll right. them down, not too bad, but if you punch them down, geez, they're hard to pot. My, my personal opinion, Jamie, and I don't want to probably go into it too much, but I think the cut on the pockets is not ideal. I think they're terrible. The, the way I'm the pockets, be honest. The way the pockets are cut, I'm not, I'm not happy with it. You say not ideal, I say <laughs> terrible. I, I say it how it is, Pike. They, they are terrible. You know, they, they throw the ball out every time. Yeah, right? I, I don't think there's enough undercut, to be honest. And... Uh, I actually got, you know, you can put three balls touching one another along the rail and you just bang a ball onto it to just test the, mm. the pocket. Well, a couple of the tables just don't take the ball like that at pace. As yeah, soon as you slow yeah. it down, it'll take it. Yeah, but that's right. You can, you can medium pace or roll them. But so if that's the Australian template, the Australian template sucks. There you go, folks. They're very round, the jaws on these. They're very round. That's what I find. Good shot required here on the bike. Expect, expect him to pot it. <coughs> Jeez, you know who he reminds me of right now? Remember when Kurt Dunham used to look at the table instead of the shot? Wow, he's missed. Remember when Kurt Dunham practically like his forehead was touching the table when he uh, used to cue? Yeah. And then he's lifted it up. I think dempsey has got a bit of an old forehead touching the table business going on there. Surprised he's missed that. Aaron Murray's another one that does it. Yeah, they look out through the top of their forehead. I don't know how they do it. But I don't think I don't think Kurt liked the uh, the criticism about it, so he just changed it. Kurt. Now he looks normal. And now he's a snooker pro. <laughs> so I helped him become a snooker pro by hanging crap on him about his uh, forehead hitting the table. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I dare say Neil Robertson's probably tuned in if he's not actually playing in the world titles at the moment, <laughs> snooker. But I know he's been watching. So hello again, Neil. I tell you what, Mick's a bit offside on this red. Can, but um, can use a bit of reverse side. And doesn't need to load up. In fact, actually, if he can land left-hand side of the table, he doesn't even need to. So I don't like this shot. I would rather it land more to the left. And that way you've just got the stun behind the ball. He's going to go across the ball. He's going to screw off the side rail and back across, yep. Played it well. And he, don't, and he doesn't have to do anything, he just has to roll it in, so. Yeah. It's funny, you, you speak to the uh, English guys or the New Zealand guys and they say that the pockets are really tight. So they're obviously, I know in England on those Supreme tables, they are crazy down the rail, they're just so big because they're sort of semi-square cut. Much harder on these tables. How's the angle on for Benny? I think he's got the angle here to get the black out of the side cushion. He's going to use a bit of right-hand side there. Oh, he's not enough side. He's, he's hit it a bit hard and yeah. it's thrown more. Yeah, yeah he didn't, didn't time through it, did he? I reckon, I don't know how much Benny's playing at the moment, but if he's actually hitting the ball a lot, Benny, they're the shots that he just never gets wrong. You know what I mean? Because he's he's just always amongst it. But if you're not playing, oh. see another one as well that 
obviously he's misjudged and he's got himself in all sorts of trouble now. All sorts. That, I don't reckon, I'm going to say that he's not really playing much because he just doesn't get that stuff wrong very often when he's playing all the time. <coughs> the old mate Jake's 3 0 up on Joel. He just keeps on trucking the old McCartney. Back injuries and wrist injuries and torn aortas and dislocated eyelashes and he still keeps winning. How does he not get a head injury with? Well he's got a dislocated eyelash <laughs> as part of his head. I saw you doing the tape measure the other day. Mate, just, I can't I still can't believe the results. He was seventy what was he, seventy two centimetres in the circumference of his head, from under the chin to around the top. I come in at 65 and I find it really hard to believe that cranium is only 7 centimetres more in circumference. <laughs> so Stevie Dempsey's opted for reds. Look at this oh, shot from oh, Benny. Oh. I actually sort of knew he was going to pot that, but look how crap his result is. Here comes another smash off the rail and pot it somewhere. Swerve round, you reckon? Or? Well, either swerve or um, come off the back rail and try and play it, catch a sort of half ballish and fluke at the double in the left middle. And then fluke at black as well. Pot it off the red in the middle. Yep. It's just going for the snooker, which is probably the, the right shot. Oh, what a shot. Hey! How do you put yourself in so much trouble and end up looking like your favourite to win the frame? <laughs> he can't he, he can't even go across the table here and put the one over the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can come up a side cushion and just glance this red. Yeah, but he's leaving Benny on. True, but you've still got to deal with the black. I mean, yes, you can get on it for a double. Benny's got himself back. More extraction. This. That's a great shot. What about this two rails, pot the one over the middle and run down and open up the red and the black in the one shot? I like the layerising of that op of that option. I'm not sure about the percentage, but we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> and we know Robbo's not going to layer up. Yeah, he's done your shot, glanced off it. Oh, well, he's almost got a huge result by falling behind the red. He's kept it nice and tight. It's not going to matter. Um, it's all about where Benny gets his white ball. Can he get the Q power into this? I think he's just going to top three this and play the double. If he plays a bit of reverse side, hits the side cush just before the middle. No, he's just going to top through it. Sure, he's going to play your shot bike. You're right. Lots of reverse side off the left side. Oh, no, no, he was dead straight. Play for the double. He's over screwed. He's made this more difficult than it Ooh, needed to be. Could side in off the red too. No, you will screw off it enough. Benny's missed the double. Yeah, sorry, my son was just coming, came over to say goodbye to me, and I got a bit distracted. We weren't even going to focus on this match, and somehow we got back onto it again. <laughs> yeah. Robbo will go three-two up, barring a very bad shot. And looks like is, is Dempsey's on the Reds over here, isn't he? Just like, actually, he could have played that better. He's a little bit awkward off the cush here, but. I think the black's off the rail enough to not make it yeah. too much of a concern. He would have liked to be out in the open a bit more, but... Wow. He hit that nice and smooth, though. He... So Mick Hill on the... Reds, is he? He's on the reds or the yellows? He's on the yellows, so he's going to play for a double here. And then he's going to land in the middle of the Southern Cross down there. Yeah, he, that is a good Southern Cross. I think the, uh, I think he'll be trying to like try and post as a bit of a shot to nothing. He, that's, oh, that's curved. That, that is, is curved. Heaps. 
but we'll shake it ahead for Mick there. Oh, they're actually playing on the table that everyone has complained about being heaps slow compared to the other ones. Mm. So Dempsey might be able to get up onto the top rail here off this middle wall. Yeah, it definitely looks like there's enough room. Does and it, actually, you know what? I'd actually rather, yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, I'd rather pop this one first, leave your angle then to float down for the last ball on its own. Yeah. But the black is still the challenge. Yeah, this is a better way because he, he's got plenty of room with that yellow there to uh, leave himself a wide angle. Also, he just passed the ball clawing, I think. Yeah, and that's where he sort of queued from. Yeah. Nice. That's actually, that is perfect. You don't have to do anything with the white. There's no, it's just all plain ball shot, isn't it? Now, where do you want to land on this red, though? I reckon not far past the centre pocket. And then I want to, I basically want to There's... take the red into the bottom right, and I want to come off back cushion. Side cushion not far away from middle pocket, back up the top cu um, cushion and try and land behind the black. That's the path that I can see. And this is see, pretty much where he's landed. The other shot I was thinking is land square with it so you can run between the yellows to get over to the side cushion on the black. But The yeah. only reason I don't like that shot is you need to be 100% perfect with your angle. Yeah. This one you have variance. You can, you can land a little higher, you can land a little lower and you're still going to have that same line. Yeah. Um, the only difference is you have to create that line maybe with a bit of side or whatever. Three rails. One, two, three. I'll tell you what, I've called that to a T because he's just missed the middle pocket. That is perfect. If anything, he's under hit it. You want to be super critical because he's missable on these tables. Yeah, he doesn't want to sit this over the hole. <laughs> no, Mick will clear. The Southern Cross will disappear fast. See, look, see what I mean? These guys are not used to these pockets. That would have flew in on their Supreme tables that they play on. Mm. Wouldn't look like missing. And, that, and that's going to bring a couple of them. I reckon that's going to bring him unstuck. And Mick, Mick's already used to it. And, well, you think Stevie Dempsey would be too. He's just played, what was it, 29 frames. Yeah, but sometimes when you're right in that moment in the pressure, frames. you revert back to what you know. Yeah, exactly And you right. don't think about the tables being different. Yeah, I mean, he's played on these tables on, on one weekend, and he's played on... His, his home tables for uh, how many years I don't know he's been playing for, but it'd be yeah. a lot. Whereas Mick's been over here on men multiple occasions, he's been playing on multiple styles of tables, so he's a, he's he's got that uh, know-how to adapt. And he might screw back a little bit here. Nah. Now he's going to run through. I thought he might screw back and just cut it and let the white drift normal, but he's decided to run right through and just take it the other way. Wow. He wanted to get nice and close to this black <laughs> and he succeeded. I'm pretty sure even he was a bit surprised about that. Yeah, a little rush of uh, adrenaline. And early signs of badness for Stevie Dempsey. 4-0. Hmm. Meanwhile, Robbo, 3 2 up. Clash of styles. This reminds me of a Victorian singles title. Yep. Actually, I do remember one year at Breakers. Benny was smashing everyone. And then Robbo came out and ran like four acts in a row or something. Just won. It was, yeah, it was. I've never actually seen Robbo do that before. That was the first time I've seen it. I'm not sure I've seen it again since. <laughs> Oh, you just got an inbox in your message from Robbo telling you he's done it three times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how freely Robbo has been playing in this tournament. There's been, there's been a, on the winner's side, there's been decent gaps. Mm. Um, but one thing that he is well aware of now is you can't, can't play the way he always plays in this uh, tournament because you just use too much energy. Sometimes you need to just free up and relax a little more and not have to be 
pinpoint precise every I'd, single shot. I'd, I'd like to say one thing too, like with this uh, 2020 on the stream tables, I haven't seen a stopwatch yet. It'll be interesting when it comes finals, do they bring it in or not? Of course they will. They will for sure, and and, and it actually annoys me, to be honest. More yeah, than well, the fact me. that they haven't been doing it and then just bring it in, that, yeah. Well, when they, and obviously I'm, this is not bagging out the tournament organisers, because it's actually impossible to enforce. You actually need a person doing it on every single table, and it was never going to happen. No, no player, whether they've just won or lost, is going to stand there and umpire. You know, someone else's match. They have to be the nicest bloke on the planet. So maybe someone like John Barton might do it. He is a nice bloke, John. He is a very nice bloke. That's why I said it. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it was never really going to be enforced entirely. But having said that, the tournament's, I think, has gone pretty well to schedule. I think the last round finished, or the round before that finished sort of like half an hour early. So it's, it's going along as planned. To be honest with you, Jamie, I don't think 2020 time actually speeds things up too much when you get quality players. Like, whether it's a minute or 2020, it's, I think in some ways it can slow matches down if it, you know, they're rushing a bit and miss a few balls and exactly. you get, in, get into tactical battles. Yeah, it creates a longer frame. And, you know, I've, and people are probably sick of me hearing, hearing me say this because I have said it a lot of times, but... The way the 2020 rule was brought in was, was just rubbish. There was no actual statistical facts to say that time was going over a minute on you know a certain percentage of shots. If you go back to the Nationals last year and you watch the quarterfinals onwards, mate, you'll probably pick a handful of shots that were over a minute. Yeah. It was free-flowing, it was quick, there was no stress. And most of the time, it's, it's only that when it gets into a tight situation, you know what I mean? That's right, and that's when you need the thinking time. And Mick Hill has made a bit of a blunder there. He's caught the jaw and snooking himself. Do you reckon he can hit this yellow still, Pikey? I mean, not that he can do much with it, but... I reckon he can hit it, but just thin. Well, they're checking it now. Dempsey said no, apparently. Yeah, I, he didn't take long to look at it either, did he? He just banged no. <laughs> I've just seen, seen Joel pick one over there. And I'm very surprised to hear Lee cheering for Joel when he's playing Jake. <laughs> Joel, he might have some dollars on Joel. Always should bet on pool players, they're always so reliable. <laughs> Ballarat versus Geelong, eh? I guess it's maybe a test of the water quality. Ballarat always wins, mate. <laughs> well, they wouldn't know if there was bad water in Ballarat. There's that many pubs, they all drink the beer. Oh, well, they're disappearing fast. So Mick Hill's hit the yellow there, and uh, Dempsey's in with the show. Are they actually wearing the same T-shirt? I think they are. It's bloody annoying to be gone, though. They're Who's not. that? It's all right, they're not. They're just, they're just black and red on both of them. I've just got no idea. No. Because you can't see their head when they're playing, the sh like when they're walking around the table. I guess all I've got to do is look for the forehead touching the table, and I know whose who's shot it is. Kick the, kick the red out? No, nah, the yellow's in the way. Landed a little awkward here, Stevie Dempsey. Mm. Can play this thin cut that he's looking at now and come off bottom and left side cushion just before the middle pocket and get amongst these three balls down the bottom of the table. Just doesn't want to land in a rail. And Robbo moves to 4 2 up on Benny. This uh, Andy Barnett that's flashing across the screen now, he roll, he beat Rusty, and apparently Rusty told me that actually Andy Barnett is his practice partner and a very good player. And Rusty actually was hoping he wouldn't have to play him because they play each other so much. Mm. Well, as it's turned out, he's got rolled by him. Mick Hill was uh, saying that Andy Barnett would ruffle a few feathers. He certainly did. And yeah, and, and Simon Singleton, that should be a cracking match. I wish that was on the live stream. 
and Stevie Dempsey does the percentage thing while he's got a dodgy ball on the top side rail there. I've noticed that about uh, Dempsey. He's, he's not shy to, uh, you know, pull back when he could be having a go. Uh, it's still a percentage shot. Yeah. You, you can't be uh, blazing away and then go, oh, jeez, I've got this tough ball on the rail. Do I double it? Do I try and can it out? And then you just chop it up and then suddenly you've got no choice but to just take a hard pot on, so... Wouldn't it be good to have like a transcript of what's going for a mix head right now? It would. <laughs> I don't know what, what this pointing is all about. He's oh, this is the parallel shift, so he's getting out of this snooker off two rails. I think he's he's trying to pot he's gonna that try and pot it. You're yeah. right, he is. He's going to try and pot it. Wow. <laughs> He'll be filthy on that. He will. He's, he's <laughs> only hit it like sort of one-eighth of the ball. He should have been hitting it pretty full and giving himself a chance to pot it, he will be absolutely See, livid. The thing with that too, he plays, if he makes that shot, he's going game. That's right. You know, he doesn't play to get out and hit the other ball, and if he pots the other ball or whatever, he, you know, he's still left with a hard shot. Yeah, well, I mean, when you look at it, it was a much harder escape than probably maybe going across one cushion and hitting the further yellow away. Mm. But... He, gave, he took the escape option that gave him a chance to pot the ball and then finish the frame because he knew that, well, fighting a losing battle. That's all right. But he's actually left the white in a really dodgy spot as well, by looks at him. So this is why Stevie Dempsey's taking a bit of time. Yeah, I think get another snooker here easy enough. I reckon this bottom red of the three is on. Actually, yes, it definitely is. I can see it. He's, like, pretty straight on it. Yeah, but does he? I don't think he wants to pot it. I'm just looking at it from the point of putting the white ball in a better spot to get a snook of the following shot. Yeah. I mean, he probably likes that ball near the corner pocket too for getting up table off, you know what I mean? Yeah, a bit of a comfort ball too. Jesus. Have a look at this break from Robbo. Everyone was crapping on about the break before about balls being over holes. This is ten times better than that other break we just saw. That is a road map, Jamie. This, it's such a road map that you don't even need to work out where you're going. The lines are already drawn for you. And have a look this, you know, a lot of players, amateur players, they leave the ball over the hole till last. You can see him getting rid of his straight end. You leave that ball over the la uh, yeah, till exactly. last, the transition of black is going to be a nightmare. Maybe Dempsey, what's no he holds to? barred here, Jamie. He is going for goal. That's right, Steve. He did, he did exceed at least two minutes to play that rolling over the hole. And uh, <laughs> well, here's the 2020 shot clock when we need it. He might be having a go here. He might try and get the angle to knock the one on the cushion. I, I don't reckon he can. I reckon he's going to try and get on the ball at the top to get the knockout. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. What's his plan there, though? Like, he's obviously trying to land sort of in that area. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure with that. All right, let's say, let's say he's trying to get on this ball at the top and cut it in and get the... Well, there's no way I want to leave the ball that thin. Not in a million years do I want to leave it that thin and that far away. And even that angle, why? You wouldn't play for that angle, like... I'd rather... I'd rather... You know what maybe he was trying to do? As a guess, he was maybe he was trying to pick the gap between the two yellows and play the back double on the red. It's irrelevant now, though, as Mick Hill will use some side and come out. Oh, he's got to go round three. I'm sure he'll be devastated about it. So actually, natural, I think he runs into the red, doesn't he? I reckon he goes around it perfect. Yeah, he'll be a bit high on the black. Because, it, well, the camera angle is a bit You deceiving. know the thing with this shot? He, he'll make sure he doesn't underplay it. Yeah. He'll definitely come up table. Just about everybody will underplay that shot. Yeah. So yeah, almost, land. he's give that that bit extra. Yeah. Most people will land another two foot to the left hand side of the table and have a dodgy black, and then miss it and lose the front. It's one thing I notice with Mick. A lot of shots, he he gives it that little bit more. A lot of people, they only get halfway onto that ball. They try and control it, and then they're left with, like you say, a, a shot that's missable. He gets up on a lot of shots close to his work, you know. Yeah, he does. Jeez, his position is so good, though, isn't it, his white ball? Yeah, he's very, very strong with that. Robbo's already made this out. 
still reckon he took about two minutes longer than he needed to with that out. Benny would have probably knocked him in <laughs> 40 seconds, I reckon. I'm going with 32. 32? I don't know if he's <laughs> got the 32 yet. I know he's done a 42 second one. I don't see him revving himself up right now. Normally, sometimes he, you know. Oh, there you go. Sam's got a, uh, a video of Benny doing a 30 second pot out. And James missed that as well. How does a left-hander do a 30-second pot out? Oh, Steve. Steve miffs that. So <laughs> what? He's like, he's like the slowest, <laughs> cuest of all time because he... he can't imagine Steve miffs that queuing fast and going berserk. <laughs> and that's not me saying he's not a good player because he's a sensational player. Well, it's just not his one. Might be good to see. Yeah, he's, he's very much the smooth-flowing... Yeah, take your sort of time on every shot sort of guy. So a big hill, 5 nil. Yeah, I, I I see this as remaining all one-way traffic, to be honest. Stevie Dempsey is just getting a little bit outclassed because he's taking on... Wow, look at this. What the hell is that? That's what you call cover. That has rolled a mile. Now, I don't know if it's called a finger mark or whether that table is just genuinely bubbles. Oh, that's got to be Benny playing that shot, was it? It has to be, Rob. I would never get that loose. <laughs> he wouldn't. <laughs> Clip in behind the yellow. In yeah. behind the yellow. Hard up. No, nah, it's, it's not too bad. Gives it Rob a chance, though. Even though it's a small one. But you yeah. can play the red up the rail, and even if it doesn't go in, it just still makes things a bit more awkward for Benny with the cover over that pocket. Definitely. Meanwhile, I can't believe how much that moved, that red. Well, Barnett, two one on Singleton. Cartney, three two up on Joel. That's a very good shot there from uh, Nick Hill. Is there a gap behind this red? That's a really strange shot. Now, I can only imagine he's done it because he just wants the wide on the side rail to not leave anything easy. So, you know, so it doesn't leave him on these two uh, yellows at the bottom here. Yes. But all he's done is just say, well, you know what, Benny, you can put this yellow over the hole and put me in some trouble. I don't like it. Maybe he's playing the odds that Benny won't try and put it over the hole. Oh, that's well, and it looks like his odds are correct because he looks like he doesn't even look at it. Now he's looking at it. He's probably looking at like... Off the red? <laughs> no, I think he's looking at playing to the left side pocket. He's like trying to drag it and, and kill the white and that way he's still on the other yellow, the same pocket. Who knows what the madman's going to be up to. He's running through, putting it in the left corner, moving the yellow and red. What a freak show. I'm just going to start calling Benny the Mad Professor. <laughs> he won't be happy with landing on the side push, though. He won't be, but he'll be happy that he got the separation and then the gap is there. Yeah. He'd be more upset if the gap wasn't there look and at, he wasn't on the side push. Look at, Mick, look at Mick just creating some magic on this table. I did not think these balls were on, Jamie. <laughs> Did you? I didn't know. Like, he had that pocket, he had that pocket. I think Stevie Dempsey has a bit of a right to be a bit annoyed by this frame. And I, I wonder if this, like, give himself an angle here to pot the top yellow into the uh, of the two that are together in the bottom right. And I wonder if the other one goes once you, you clear the black with the white. Well, I think he, they both go. I don't think you need to move. Or will he leave himself? Will he leave himself low on it and then pot the yellow in the bottom left? So I think it goes in there. Yeah, apart from being over the red a little bit, I think you take the one to the... Oh, no, he's not. He's running. As long as he just runs into the edge of these two reds. I think he bottom one. Oh, not both. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's that's a good angle, too. You just stun across. Yep, just pick the line just past, like, to the left of the red. 
as long as you miss it, just like that. His white ball is very, very good. Very good. Now, I'm assuming that it goes bottom right, but let's find out. Yes, it does. So 6-0 should be the case very shortly. The consistency with Mick is just... It's a different level to the others, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to wonder if anyone's going to be able to challenge him. I don't know, I don't know what he's... Uh, his opponent's highest frame score has been that's lost to him. Well, put it this way, Jamie, after the first three rounds, I know he was on 33 wins and three losses. <laughs> wow. But he is starting to get to a point in the uh, tournament now where he's going to run into, you know, Australia's best players, New Zealand's best players. Clint, Clint Kapler did get a fair few frames off him, I think, the round after that. Do you know the score? Yeah. That was Mick. Did you happen to catch a score with Clinton Mick Hill? Mick Hill from Kepler. Tell you what, Benny's, Benny's in trouble here. Oh, well, you're wrong, Pikey. What's that? 11 1 was Clint Kepler's score, according to Dan. No, 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 no. His first three rounds were. Yeah, 11 1. What a nice bike letting his opponents get a frame each. <laughs> He said, he said he was nah. no good. Tell you what, Benny's in a bit of trouble here, like scoreline and where the balls are, Jamie. Yeah, see, that shot, not on on these tables. Yeah, but he didn't he didn't have much choice. He just No, he didn't. Danger signs for Ben here. Yeah, Robbo will go into Operation Lockdown. Oh, I don't want to... There you go, so Clint Cap with 11-6 on McHill, so that's the best effort by someone so far into and you know it's not still it's not really close to the mark, is it? It's just over halfway. So no one's really properly challenged McHill yet. Um, probably at this stage of time last year he probably wasn't overly challenged either, but then as soon as as soon as all the top seeds starting meeting each other, that's when we saw some real cracker matches and the score lines get a bit closer. Is that yellow beside the black on, or does he need to nudge it? Oh, he's covered. That's actually a really good shot. I mean, he's not. What's the point of trying to pot out from there when that dead yellow at the top yeah. there is in play? That is a great shot. And look at the thing I like about Mick. Or every time you come to the table against him, what have you got? Yeah, you're knackered. <laughs> you know, his white ball is so tight every time. The real, the real key with that shot too is. He didn't. He didn't leave the. Um, that's a result. Well, it looks like he's sort of half played for what it. A, what about long, long double and cover the top corner? Long double. Yeah, oh, the yeah. one on the side cushion. Yeah, put yeah. it up near the top corner. Uh, he's, he's actually. Uh, he's actually under. He's misjudged that because the white ball's meant to be behind the yellow. Poor shot, McHill. Poor shot. I think he's, <laughs> he's also getting the black ball out of trouble there, like in case he does get his ball potted. Oh, absolutely. But he, he wanted that white ball tight behind the yellow. Yeah. And he's chopped up. He's chopped up, Pikey. Can you believe it? <laughs> but, yeah, no, he, he's just asserting his dominance at the moment. The thing I liked about the shot previous to that one, though, is he he left the white in such a position where Stevie Dempsey could just pot his ball over the hole and sort of, you know, just say, well... I need you to have a dip here, but it's a hard out. Is he going to... Look at this shot from Benny. You've got to keep an eye on Benny, because he does come up with shot of the tournament and sometimes. You know what? <laughs> just really couldn't have landed much worse. They're not on now. Robert's got no pressure on him. He's just ensuring that there isn't a uh, ball on ball situation. And but if you're. Uh, can you run across these two reds, get them both out? I'd be tempted to do it because 
all that yellow still at the top and you, you haven't really got a lot on to extract it or land on it. I don't see the I don't see what, anything wrong with your shot there, Pikey, so flick off the left hand side of the bottom red. It's gonna face cut away from that area and the other one, the wash is gonna cannon the other one and hit fairly full and just push it away from that area as well. The only thing that could suck with this shot is if the, the top ball that he cannons Hits goes and cannons the yellow up towards that end of the table and gives Mick some kind of just... And the red know. stays dead, you know what that... Yeah, and also if he gives him some kind of extraction possibility with probably it. probably want to hit the red about half ball and hit play it a little bit firmer so it misses the yellow, you know what I mean? Yeah, it comes yeah. off the side cushion out. Or he's jacking up, which will do the same thing. Yeah. Oh no, he's only yeah. playing one. That was risky because if he had actually caught that red... Well, that yellow up there is officially dead. I still think there's long double on the side gush. I've been looking at it to put it up in the corner. I don't like it, and I'll tell you, the only reason I don't like it, why why bring another one of your balls into play into an area that can just cause you congestion when you've already got full control yeah. of the frame at the bottom of the table here? i tell you what, Mick's kept him off that side ball. I wonder if Mick can, um, sorry, if Stevie can just push through this yellow, the, t the top one, and pop the other one over the hole. <laughs> Stevie's taking another red up that area of the table. Boxing it in, that boxing is, it in. That is, if it wasn't slaughtered earlier, it has had its head decapitated now, that yellow. He's, Mick says, I'm bringing soldiers up. <laughs> Reinforcements. <laughs> Uh, all he's doing is just continuing to keep uh, keep him off his yellow, a red on the side rail. And why Stevie Dempsey is not kicking this red off the bottom rail, off, you know, coming off the bottom rail. Stevie has what you call surrounded him. It's, ter it's, a, ter <laughs> it's a terrible option. You had to pull the red out away from those yellows of that shot. Because then he would have actually been in control of the frame. Yeah. He, would have been a, he would have been a shot ahead. I'm really wondering if Mick can actually come off the side rail and smash this apart. Yeah, but does he want to and then leave Dempsey the chance to make the double and win the frame? I'd rather have that than him kick it out next shot and you lose anyway. Oh, no, that's a great shot. He's gone for both. He's He's got the bad yellow off the cushion. Oh, he's actually got a massive result by accidentally snooking on the ball on the side rail as well. And also the red blocked by the black. and uh, yeah. See, an incorrect choice of shot, in my opinion, has allowed that shot to occur. Certainly these reds aren't that great. No. Around these yellows, so all killing them earlier. I think the thing here, if you're in Dempsey's shoes, you've got to make that white tight when Mick comes to the table so he, he doesn't have options. That's right. Even even though you you're in trouble, you're behind, you can't leave Mick any options. Benny's having a nightmare. Just try to sit the ball over the hole and pot it. Benny should never try and sit balls over holes, ever. I'd, I'd be tempted to lay up on the, the red that's near the top left corner, Jamie. If you leave Mick out this side, you know, he's going to find a shot to get the yellow in front of the red. You rest up on that, though. You leave it on the middle, don't you? Yeah, but maybe you bounce off it a little bit but try and just dig the white right in there yeah you leave him anywhere down this way he pots a yellow and then he puts the yellow over the hole you know what i mean just going off back rail into it yeah i think that corner is where i'd be leaving him that's a great shot yeah that is a good shot but i'm gonna just leave the white there yeah i know but he, at the end of the day you, you have to do that yeah yeah no you're right it's a good shot though, just the touch-up's a good shot too. It's just such an obvious option. I mean, you've got this red that still hasn't been kicked out down here. Yeah. Uh, you might as well say that's a shot wasted unless, like I said, you play a very good double. But at least now you do have the two. Maybe you can move the one that's near the black and then lay him back up there, you know, or move, put something onto the yellow and then put him back there, you know. I don't reckon he hit that ball near the black. I reckon they're almost touching. 
which means he's that tight on it. Beer going. French and Collier style. Wow. And now you put the uh, red back in front of the yellows, maybe. <laughs> not an easy cover from that angle. No, it's not. It's tough. You've got to kind of overcut it, too. And you've got to give it a bit of pace, too, to get it over there. Oh, he's actually checked that up, Pete. Uh, he's going to play the one down the cushion, leave the white in behind the reds. I don't reckon you can. But even if you don't have to get it right over the hole, as long as your white's in between the two reds. You know what I mean? But isn't he just going to cannon the reds to the right as soon as he hits this red? No, if it's going to no, get no, it past no. the yellows? So you like that. Ah, it's a good shot. So even if the red's not right over the hole, Mick still can't play the yellow. Oh, Benny's gone. He's doing the uh, Ben in a toilet break. 6-2 down. He's getting smashed. It's only toilet. 6-2. I'm going to be quick, quick, quick. Rack him. We love the Ben in a toilet break. It's all about rhythm, Jamie. Apparently has a bladder the size of a pea. A bladder that likes to pee? No, the size <laughs> of a pea. But obviously it likes to play as well. Kenny. What is it? So this frame's been quite interesting because it's chopped and changed a couple of times. seen a lot of uh, matches along the top there, the scores and updating it. Just to explain how that works, um, somebody has to use a mobile phone or something with internet connection to put their pin number in for that particular match and then they basically just press a plus on whoever's score gets a frame and then obviously that gets sent to the pool stat server and it updates live here. But if you're not using that then the score is just going to say zero zero. And that's why I used to see some people's scores not change. <coughs> I tell you what, this frame here, Jamie, there's been a lot of quality pool play, but if, if someone wants to learn sort of shot selection and what to do in situations, like, look at the shots that these blokes choose to play in the situations they're in and why they do. I agree. And the only, only I think the only person who's watching the live stream right now that might be whinging about this frame will be Dax Wosley, because they haven't just attacked the balls and pot out. And obviously, Stevie Davis took like three minutes to play one shot. So, Jot, I'm sure that Dax is sitting there basically smashing bricks against his, car, his uh, shins in anger. <laughs> and just demanding 2020 shot clocks and attacking frames and, and all sorts of jazz. But, Dax, you can learn something here. You can get good at this game if you want, if you choose to. Chris Beagley, 2 nil up on Scary. How Scary dropped his bundle after he's lost 11-10. Oh, that's a nice angle. Oh, that's a sensational shot. Problem with if he goes to uh, kick the other red out, you've got to be on it. Well, not necessarily. I mean, he could be on the other red, but he's going to be playing long range. And it's a tough shot. Well, not now. So he's, uh, he's landed on it. He's, he's on it. He's got a shot. It's tough. And this is actually, this is exactly the sort of shot when I when I first rejoined commentary. 
that I wanted to see him play. I, this is not easy for anyone, He's but I just, I just want to see the body movement. That's all I, all I want to see is the body movement. You might not see it on camera. I'm going to watch his body directly. No, he, he actually didn't move a bit there. That was sensationally cute, but no and dice. I like the way he, he really give it a bit too. Like He could have dropped that in, you know, play the role, but then you, if you put any side on it or the table moves. I'm telling you now, you can't roll that. You're, just, you're, you're 100 to 1 to pot it. I yeah. have tried all my life to do it. It doesn't work. <laughs> and I still keep trying. I, d I don't do it when I'm playing well, but when I'm not queuing well, the and I know is, I'm going to hit the side of a barn with it. Even if he did just drop it in, he would have had a tough red as well, you know? Yeah, exactly. But at least he would have been on it. Oh, this, this is a, he needs a result here. That's not bad. No, not two not shots. Good. It's not good. Well, at least he's not fouled. Might as well have fouled here, Jamie. This is over. Oh, we're smashing up wedges here, Pikey. Oh, yeah. All right. I love it when Colby orders Palmer's. She eats, yeah, she eats about, I don't know, one eighth of it and then comes and gives me the rest. Good result. I haven't actually eaten today yet myself. It's only 4.30 in the afternoon. Haven't had anything to eat. Nice. Should have been playing pretty much since I got here. So this is looking ominous in 7-0. Once he's, once he's committed, nothing looks like it can possibly go wrong. Well, this is what I love about the way Mick goes about the game. You get down to his last three or four shots, and it's so simple. You know, he just takes the patterns that make that end game so simple. Exactly. I'm not sure he's just played there. I'd have probably just run through. He's just stunned for side row like it was the easiest shot in the world, no worries. And that's the thing, like, towards the end of the frames when the pressure's on and you don't want the difficult tight shots, you know? You want it as simple as you can. I'm just going to go and find out how long until I get this palmer. So, Josh Boyle, four three up on the uh, other side of the draw. Grant Weekly and Travis Crawley, three all. I'd like to say good day to Adrian and Tracy. Thanks for the text. Andy Barnett, Simon Singleton, three all. Jake McCartney, Joel Younger, four all. Got a few close ones. Got himself a little angle there to move the black if he wants to. I think he is. Yep. But he wouldn't be happy with the white getting stuck on the side there. He wanted them both to come out. I'm just jumping on commentary at the moment for Jamie. He's having some food. First bit of uh, food for the day for him, I believe. Welcome. Um, oh, and I'm Sam, by the way. He's not going to be happy with that. The only thing I can really see him doing there is putting the red in front of the, the yellow in the bottom left-hand corner and just covering up. I, I don't think he can get through the gap between the two yellows near the centre pocket on the right hand side. You might find him play a red 
off. Yeah, I'm not sure. Meanwhile, anyway, Mikkel's uh, looks like he's going out again. Mapping out these yellows. Yep. a nice angle there, just got a little bit of angle on the yellow. Play the rail ball now, you would think. Oh, Robbo could get through to that red between that uh, between the two yellows. And he's putting a good thin cut. I think this is there now, I think you can just roll this one in past the, yeah, you can not roll in the closest red past that one. Or is Jackie up on? Jeez. Oh. Depends how tight this yellow is near the red on mixed table. Yeah, yeah, he's he's not quite where he wants to be actually. If you can roll the one in the centre and be on it. And then come back for the black. But I think he might be able to screw straight out off it after this. It's hard yeah. to see from the angle. Yeah, if, if it's too covered by the red, then he'll he'll probably just stun into it and then, then if play he the can't, black long. If he can't get out off it, he will just stun into the red, yeah. Looking at this angle, I think he'll just stun the red out of the way. Yep. 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 He's played it nicely. So, Robbo goes 7 2 up. And Mick goes 8 0. Yeah. How'd you travel so far, Pikey? Yeah, it's been a long weekend, I tell you. Yeah. So Benny to break. So this is where snap one red down. If Benny wants to turn this match around, I think right now is probably a crucial moment. Yeah, you can't afford to go much further down than seven two. Especially against someone like Robbo, you can't really peg back someone like that. He can tie it up. If you start to get on a bit of a run, he can slow the yeah, match right down. Yeah, Robbo's a smart player. He'll try and slow the match down and uh, yeah. stop Benny flowing. Yep. And Dempsey really needs to get on the board about now. Um, <laughs> Dempsey, yeah. He's... Yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. he's really just struggling. He's been absolutely flying. I've, I've yeah, seen a couple of his matches earlier, and he's playing brilliantly, just not missing a thing. No, I think a bit of scoreboard and a bit of who he's playing here is, uh, yeah. you know, makes those shots about 40 times harder than they were <laughs> exactly. when you were flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he, yeah, he 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 jumped on. Uh, and he's immediately tight. Like he went from flowing against Justin Sage, playing really well. Oh, that's the first shot I've seen Mick uh, miss so far. Mick loaded that up with a heap of left-hand side. If you didn't see, yeah. I'll go back and watch the cue ball spinning after that shot. That's why he missed that pot. Yeah. But I mean, and I think you watch the table as well. Though. You watch Mick. He puts flicks aside on absolutely everything. Yeah. That's yeah. just the way he plays. He lines up so much. Uh, sorry, loads up so much. It looks like he's actually going to cue off the ball. Yeah. Somehow doesn't miss cue every shot. <laughs> it's oh, Benny's just throwing the cue. He's dropped it actually, but <laughs> so what do you what do you reckon? Dempsey puts this over the pocket? Oh, I think that's probably the right shot. Um I mean, you could drop it in and you could still go again, run that last yellow down the cushion. Yeah, it's a bit too risky if you... 
if he if he does plot it, then he can go out. But if he if he doesn't, then you know. I, th I think there's there's an argument for saying you could have a go here. You could try and pop this yellow. Yeah. Rather than just put it over the hole. I don't know. I think that at this stage he sort of needs to needs to get a frame rather than go for a big out. Yeah. yeah. Mick, Mick can risk the ounce. Sometimes when you're, you're that far behind, though, you've got to do something phenomenal to get yourself going, you know? Yeah, true, yeah. You know, you see. take these on, yeah. you make the out, you pump yourself up, and you he get is. on a hot streak. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, and he's, he's gone the pump. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, sometimes, I mean, like... Everybody's uh, got their own unique styles, don't get me yeah. wrong, Lloyd. You can... You know, you can grind it out too. You've got yeah. a lot of grinders. Yeah. And but sometimes that's the way they bring themselves back into matches. Yeah, slowing the other player down, yeah. Yeah, at 8 0 down, you sort of you gotta say that he's sort of he's really struggling in the match so far. Yeah, he needs well, to needs to pull out something and needs to be pretty special. You, you look at Benny like if he gets back into this match against Rubber, it won't because he's grinding the frames yeah, out. Yeah, exactly, yeah. He'll be producing some magic if he does. Yeah. I think Dempsey's actually on here. He can, he's got just you know, roll into the centre here, roll into the right hand side. Um, yeah, these are a chance. Don't and worry he'll probably about be that. playing that the one on the right hand rail last, uh, and just just gently screwing back the tiniest bit, not leaving McHill much, covering the pocket down here if he misses it, and being on the black to the centre to the left. I think the key with that last ball with Dempsey. Is you don't want to end up straight on it, so you just roll it and your white's on the rail. You want a little bit of angle, yep. so your white comes out off the cush and you're not snoogered behind the reds. Yep. Um, the where he's landed here, he, I mean, he could even take it second, but I don't think so. No, I don't think he will. Um, the transition to the black's a little bit dicey, then you have to sort yeah. of screw back a little bit off that one. See, so if he's straight on this, yep. it's just a sort of stun maybe come back a little yeah, bit. He, I think he is taking yeah, he's going to take it. Now. I was just going to say, he's, he wants to be exactly there to play it, so he may as well play it, it now. Just, if he comes back to roughly where he is now, he can just roll the, the yellow through to the top left-hand corner and then play the black back into the bottom right. That's that a good a great pot. shot. Yeah. Well, he might even just great shot back. for a pom who's used to the generous down-the-rail shots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and oh, Robbo's played a He's got an angle to move shot. the red, too, if yeah. he wants to. Uh, I don't think he needs to, it just drops, goes into the centre. Oh, sorry, he goes, just roll it in. Yeah, if it's, if it's, that's a great shot from Dempsey. Yeah, Dempsey's played a really good If that red's on near the middle, Rubbo will just drop this in. If it's not, he'll nudge it. It's on. Yeah. And then he uh, drops this in, takes the one down the push. Oh, swings that, around the angles off the last red. That was a big out there, we were um, just commentating on that from... Uh, Dempsey, uh, he definitely needs to do something. I'm not convinced he can come back from 8-0 uh, down. Against uh, McHill as well. Yeah, against <laughs> McHill, of course, yeah. There's too many breaks in it, really. Whoa. Oh, he hit that a little bit soft, I think. He sort of tried to dolly it in. Yeah. You know, and, uh, it started little... out wide and didn't come back in. I so, say Ben's got an awful shot here, but he might. Oh, okay, I, I thought it was partly covered there. Oh, how's that sad? Oh, I don't know. I don't think the yellow's on in the middle. He's got to go. Yeah. It is on in yeah, the middle. Must be on it. It didn't take any time at all. Does he get right over to the side rail here? Yeah, I think so. No, he's oh. left himself a little angle. That's good. Benny loves these shots. Yeah. Yeah, he punches them in, and it's sort of the worrying pace <laughs> with a worrying success rate as well. <laughs> Alright, so that, that is the kind of thing that he needs to do. He needs to get himself fly flying. You see, he starts to, to pick up his speed, and that's how he gets himself going. He's talked about that a couple of times, actually. When, when he starts to slow himself down, that's when he really chokes up, and he sort of he makes wrong choices. Um, yeah, when he gets himself flowing, that's when he, yeah. yeah Still he says Jake frames. and Joel are four all, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, okay. I'm yeah, not sure about the score with um, Jake and Joel. So Mick Hill, uh, if he makes this ball, no, he hasn't. 
didn't learn brilliantly either, but yeah, Dempsey's got a lot of work. Yeah, okay, so it is 5-4 Joel um, against Jake McCartney. So Dempsey in a bit of trouble here. He's got to get this in front of the yellow. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he'll be able to take the pop completely. Oh wow, went he, right under. He had to pop that. Yeah, yeah. If you roll through only about an inch or two here. Yeah. That was the right position. Yeah. It, then you can take the one in the ball, cut it in, come down the cushion, open those two reds. Yeah, into the top left hand corner and open up the two on the side, yeah. yeah. Still a good shot to cover though, don't worry about that. Yeah, I suspect he'll he'll be covered back. See this is interesting to see what Mick does here because my first option is drop the yellow in front of the red and cover that hole. Yeah. But you don't see Mick play that kind of shot a lot. No. It'll be interesting to see whether what what other I'll be interested for myself to see what other options he, he does. You know, does he take on a pot, get an angle to come off two or three rails and knock that bad yellow out like Rusty Wood? Or yeah, exactly, yeah. What does he do? I uh, don't know. Just looking at the... Um, on the camera, it's a little bit difficult to say. It looks like it um, be a bit easier to cover. But uh, looking at the table from here, I reckon it's difficult to cover that, um, that corner there pocket. There you go. He's got an angle off. He'll just cut this in inside the red and he'll hit the yellow from behind. And he'll... Beyond the yellow into the middle if he hits it full. Yep. Yeah, so this one I don't think you can actually cover the The key is hitting so. the back of this yellow full. Yeah. Oh, see, see how he hit that yellow? Like, he's white. Yeah, yeah He always, knew yeah. exactly what side of that yellow he was hitting. Yeah, it's, it's easy to, um, to just cut that onto the side rail or yeah, even push it towards the red even further. But yeah, he's, he's got it out clear. That's a really nice shot. That's, ben, uh, Ben's uh, looks like he's... That is class from Miku, I tell you. Yeah, it like, is, yeah. Just Ben's, his, Ben's running the track. He, he picked up reds. So there's some quite a bit of um, traffic around the black ball. He's clearing it up, but a little bit of work to do still. Swing round off two rails here. Yeah. Black in the same pocket. Yeah, he puts a fair bit of side on that. Yeah, on everything. It's even a long shot, but yeah. uh, it's just the way he plays, you know. Uses a natural sort of weight of the ball with a bit of side, comes around. Yep. Oh, I'm not sure what Benny's looking at here, but... He's going to stun this in the middle and then play the one down the right. Oh no. He's kicking the other red. Oh, he's missed the kick. Oh, he's give that ball the knee, did you yeah, see yeah, that? Yeah, lifting the knee, I think it, that just, just changed the angle slightly, just enough. Anyone wants to go to Benny Noonan's martial arts of full <laughs> school? That's your first move. Yeah, yeah. Just helps the spin take that little bit more. I'm not sure if this one goes to the centre to the right hand side. Pass uh, it doesn't look like does. it does. It is tricky. You need to get that centre pocket cleared so it can play the, the red that's next to the black back into that centre pocket. this yellow off the red and no, open the black in the one shot? No, surely oh, not. I wouldn't have thought so. Now you'll open the black first. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. not a good result. 
his, his and then he, so he, what he would have done there is kick the black out, then got back up, and then oh, play. Actually, his, his yellow goes straight underneath that. Goes bit. straight yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. What I'm am I talking about? No, I'm just looking over the table. You can see it. See when you look at the can table. Can you screw back into the red and the black then? It's, oh, it's pretty tight. I don't know if you. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit over half a pocket, but yeah. You don't want to be playing that with too much pace. I think he's got the angle, though. I don't, I don't suspect he'll play. I think he'll probably come up behind the black. Maybe it is a bit tight. Yeah. It does go, but it's the kind of one that you want to put in or over. Nick's tried to get an angle there so he can move the black. Yeah. I don't, it's not a natural, I don't think. Yeah, I think he can, he can force it in. He's hitting it high. Yeah. Forcing Ooh. it. Yeah, it wasn't, see, it wasn't a natural. He had yeah, to force it. he had that. to force it, yeah. He got it out, but... He got it out, but now the reds are all on. I couldn't see if he, if he just jawed that or if that popped back out of the pocket. I suspect he, he must have jawed it. I haven't seen any balls pop out of the centres here. Dempsey absolutely must convert here. Yeah, even so. Oh, he's just overrun that shot a little bit. But he can still make it to the centre. But... Overrun is probably not... So Dempsey's got on his bad ball just to trickle down. Drops this in. A little yeah. bit closer to it than he liked, but yeah. It's slightly straighter than it looks on the on the uh, screen though. Ben's missed his shot to the center. Uh, yeah, so Nick's got a bit of work to do now, but tell you what, there's a gap inside that red though for one of his yellows up the top to yeah. come sailing down off the edge of the red. Yep, yeah, true. Lining up for uh, oh, 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 oh. That's the worst positional shot I've seen him play today. He is not happy. No. Oh. What do you reckon here? The combo inside the red. What a huge shot. Oh. Yeah, it's a big shot. Play it off the edge of the yellow. Like one yellow off the edge of the other yellow and cover the black. How big would that be? Yeah, yeah. I think he's playing the straight plant. He is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. That and was huge. Now he's that had all the, the yellows to play the shot that, that was huge. Was expecting that to was play. huge. That was not an easy shot. No, it wasn't. The, the white was so close to the, that yellow that he had to hit first. And then a, Cushion you know, first here. There's a decent bit of separate, yeah. Oh. He's, <laughs> he's jumped up. <laughs> Looks like Jamie's back from his meal. He's uh, he's commenting on a, on an all too rare uh, chop up from Mitch. You think the last one was ridiculous? Wait till you see this one. For side rail, a bit of <laughs> side. To bring it back. I think he is. He's, you know, he's a lot of side here. He is, he's just going past the black. Because. Coming back with left hand side yeah. and hitting the yellow, he's just looking that he can actually hit the yellow into the barrel off the red. Oh! Yeah, nailed it. That is large. That is large. Yeah. That's not a terrible finish there, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, Jamie Stevens has just proposed to Nick Hill. <laughs> Yeah, that was a huge finish there. Replay those last two shots, that was crazy. That was absolutely mental, especially the first 
Just seeing if we can get the replay up of that ridiculous shot that McKill's just played. I haven't got the first one there, but we might be able to get that last one. If we're checking the white ball up off the uh, rail. Here's the replay, folks. Here's the replay. Just bang, bang, bang. You actually see as well before that, he did line up the um, that yellow off the red. Yeah. He would oh. take it in direct, but he took it off the red. Yeah, he played it for off the red. He didn't play for direct. Either or, really. He had a bit of a margin of error there. Um, more... Oh, Rob oh, almost picked oh, the man. finest of gaps, and he's landed fat. I don't think center. he meant to come back no, that far. No, I don't far. think so. Um, and that, that yellow does pass uh, into that corner. It looks a little bit tight on the screen, but it actually goes quite clearly. So it looks like Robert's going to take this one back. I think... Uh Mick Hill's see the finish line here, I think, on the yeah. yellows. Yeah, I think that's actually about the, the average number of frames that he's given to any of his opponents. Except for Clint Kappa, he did get yeah. six off here. Yeah, but which is a... All the others got one. Yeah, yeah. So Lolo takes a, a extensive lead there to eight three. At the moment, I think Robbo is just uh, grinding away at Benny. Yeah, I think yeah, Robbo's probably pretty content to just sort of maintain his lead. If you, even if they go frame to frame now, he's probably not going to be too worried. Um, yeah, Nick Hill's trying to invent some way to go out here. Uh, they're all there, but you know, he's just working out something. Oh, sorry, is he on the red? So I thought he was on the yellow. Yeah, yeah, my bad, red, yeah. my bad. Oh, he's dropped it. He's on nice that is, in the centre. That is a great shot. That's another great shot. Like, the, I'm tipping the the red that's on the bottom rail just here, directly below the white, and it'll be his last red. I'm, I'm just saying he, he taps this into the centre. Um, the thing, plays for one long. Well, the thing I'd leave that one and not take it long because then. You can use that to get off the ball in the balk. Yeah, I, I reckon he's going to you know, roll this one in. Um, roll the one in the top left-hand corner. Oh, no, I'm wrong. <laughs> he's, so he's going to play that later. Yeah, he's going to take corner and then get on the one on the back rail. Yeah. And then use that one from the middle pocket to get up for the other one. Yeah, I thought he was going to run through off the one uh, into the it's, corner. And play it, the one it's on a the good way because next. you don't have to do anything with the tight top shot up the top. You know yeah. what I mean? You can just sort of. Yeah. You probably need to come back a bit though. Yeah, yeah. He, he has overhit that. He yeah, he, he did overhit that. His work. He definitely wants to screw back a bit now off this. Yeah, he needs a bit of angle on it, otherwise he's uh, gonna have to force the one into the. Yeah, that's a good spot. It's not quite enough though. Like, I think he's got the angle. I think he's gonna just stun. It's, it's all right. This yellow, um, you, down past the black. Yeah, where he's. You got to force out, out a bit here. If he comes back another half a foot, though, it's a natural sort of angle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He should be able to stun out, but now he's got to force and he's got to get past the black. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, which, yeah. He's hit it well. Yeah, see, now... He put his cue to that exact See, now he's still right. slightly on the wrong side of this red, all because of that first shot. If he comes back that extra foot, then he gets up on that ball, then he gets on the other side of this red and everything's easy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, I'll still, I'll back him to get these, yeah, don't worry yeah, about sure. that, but I mean, mix about, mix them, about still. making the game as simple as he can make it, you know? It's, it's, yeah, that's why it's so good He's to looking at running it. through off the yellow here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, he's, he's jacking up his... his yeah, he's I running through, I think. His cues all over the shop, I don't know, at least. <laughs> he hasn't decided yet. 
He's worried about running in behind the second yellow. I, I reckon I'm, I'm picturing I'll be screwed back off this red and then can that yellow and play the black into the other centre, the left hand centre. He wants to be able to run through off the edge of the eye, but not leave himself on the on the bottom cush, yeah. and not snooker himself. So now he is going to yeah, heaps of. Oh, oh. Yeah, he's trying to run through. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have been running anywhere near. He that. wanted to hit that first yellow a lot thinner. I, I, I steer clear of those completely just because I'm. Really no, thinner good he wouldn't go off, thicker he might. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, yeah. Jamie's going to run down and headbutt him if he pops his black out of the snooker. <laughs> right, so just line this up. Easy stand up pocket into the long pocket. Just decided to tie up one of the yellows. Yeah, a few people were surprised he's missed that. <laughs> yeah. Tactical tie up with the yellow there. That being said, he, yeah, he didn't give away two, which would give Dempsey at this stage of the frame, yeah, the match, a little bit of confidence there. But you'd still expect him to go out. Especially at this stage, yeah, so it's 10-1 like, down. Yeah. He's not really looking at winning this. Robo 9-3. You reckon? Dibs is looking running around the table. Oh, and he's notched the black as well. That's a pretty good result. That yellow did go previously, but yeah, it makes it a little bit easier. Big break from Robbo. Yeah. Big break from Robbo. Pity, pity about the white ball, but yeah. It's a bit of an awkward yellow on the left hand side. And yeah, there's a little bit of work to do up the, in the back end. Dempsey's ended up a little bit straight and a little bit on the cushion here on this yellow. Yeah. That is the problem, I guess, when you. When you look at me and you think, oh, these are all here, they are all there, you still need to transition. He's got to force this if he wants to get through. Yeah, I think he's got just enough angle to... Oh, okay. yeah, he's going to play the drop-in. Drop-in, snooker. Yeah. He's got to just cover the side rail so he can't go straight across. Yeah, it's nice. It's one thing I like about Dempsey's game, he, he, he notices when things are a little bit tough yeah. and he plays a smart shot, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, some you can you can play and try and get on that yellow and pot out, but yeah. he says I am not going to lose the frame here yeah. by laying up. You know, maybe one in one in what Mick's going to pot this. Yeah, and you're talking about Mick, like yeah, exactly. as us average mortals would probably pot this one in fifty. Yeah, see what he's doing here is he's, he's picking the midpoint. He was, he was showing us to a few people the other day. He's lining up parallel lines between the centre of the pocket and the white ball and the black ball. Yeah. So this is a two rail escape. I'm just... I'm just going to play this a little bit of left hand side as well to straighten up the last oh, no. one. Oh, oh he slid just wide. Past it, yeah. And it's a foul snooker, I think. Oh, Mick's, I think Mick's asking if it hit it. Two. He wasn't sure if he hit it. No, he he's didn't. Not, he's it. not used to fouling. Yeah. 
Who's that? So Dempsey's mount, uh, mounting a late uh, comeback. Late charge, late charge. <laughs> um, yeah, McCartney is 4-8 uh, down to Joel Younger. In the Ballarat versus Geelong Country Derby. Yep. 4-8, you say? Yeah. I'm just going to jump off and I'll let you back with Jamie. Big 10 4, Jamie. <laughs> nah. That's it, 9 3 at the moment. So, Dempsey, Dempsey has crunched that pack. What a split! but the white has flown into the middle. Absolutely flown in. Yeah, you'd have to think now that this is the end of this match. The bookies have shut up shop, I tell you. They shut up shop about six frames ago, I reckon. <laughs> I like the way he gets nice and close to that, Jamie. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't need to do anything with this, so nah. he just get, just wants to drag it in, and he's got blinking ball. Three balls back and forth across the middle. Chick is one to one right next to Blake, and it's probably going to be his last ball, or actually maybe his second last ball. Well, it is actually quite tricky. I'm sort of behind the corner pocket here. I think it will go in the corner. He's just looking at it now. Yeah, it's... It, it all depends on how he decides to take these four line of balls in the middle of the table, and what order and what angles he has. The way, the way I see this out, Pikey, is you're putting this ball in the right centre now, then play the other one in the left centre and stun it so you've got a nice straight shot on the one that's just above the, those three, and then you're just going to screw back a little bit and be nice and straight on that ball near the black, Screw back off that a little bit, the other one in the middle, and in your home. That's how I sort of see this out. The only, the only thing that's not good about how I've just picked that path is there's two or three shots that need to be precise in that out. Looks like this goes past the black. Oh, and this one goes in the corner as well. So he's taking a path that yeah moves the wide about two inches in yeah. his hole out. <laughs> he still needs to be precise, but yeah, you're right. The minimal, the minimal wide ball movement is. Uh, ensures that the error is three. You look at those last three shots that he played, the white literally moved two inches. <laughs> yeah, has not moved at all, and he's made the out look ridiculously easy. And the path that I initially chose was just horrible worse compared to what he's just chosen. It's crazy how simple he makes it look, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's, it's great to watch. And that's the difference. Like, people might not think it's a big difference, but consistency is where it's all at. We can all pot out. So it's how often she... Right. That's the end of that match. And uh, Stevie Dempsey's not done yet, though. He will move over to the repercharge side. No, I think that's not the last we'll see of him. No, I'm pretty sure he'll win, win more matches. Obviously, depending on who he draws, but I don't think he's going to let that stress him too much. Nice little shot there from Benny. little flick off the red to land... Benny with the cre creative position off the red. And I'll tell you what, we are a chance to go to 10-4 for the confirmation. I'm waiting on the confirmation, yeah, Jamie. Big 10-4. Ten 10-4, four. Ten four, rubber ducky. Yep. Is Debbie at home watching Do you know Pikey? She did turn the stream on for a little bit before. She's She, uh, she is a big fan of the 10-4 on the confirmation. She, she's gone down uh, Thorpedale way, down to her parents. Is this Simon Singleton we see on screen at the moment? Simon Singleton? I think it is. That is, that is Simon Singleton. Who is he playing? I rate this bloke. Yeah, Simon Singleton from New Zealand. Who's Keep your playing? eye on him, he can play. I, can't, I don't know who he's playing. <laughs> Look out, another big break from Benny. We'll pot the red in the corner off the yellow and clear that other red and then have a series of relatively nice shots. We've just had word on the street, Jamie, that uh, 
the bloke who's playing scary is not missing, Chris Beagley. He's on fire. He's From like, NT, he's going he's, off. He's like seven two up or something on scary. Well, Chris Beagley is no dud. Um, I've seen him play some good pool before. And yeah, once he gets his cue and action going, he's a bit of a freak show, actually. Good shot there from Benny to make sure he's got the correct angle to transition. I'm assuming he'll pick the gap here, just go to the left hand side of the yellow and uh, through the gap. There we go. He's overrun. overrun. Does have the backup ball in the middle. And may have to check it up a little bit though with some right hand side, make the pot a little bit more difficult. He says no. He's going to check this one up instead off the top rail. Jim did a lot of right inside to check He's this up. Check this up like a boss, Jamie. He's going to need to be. I'm like, I'm just, I see him running into the yellow, so. What, what about round the back of the yellow in the balk here? You like that, do you? Well, I don't like it, but Benny I, reckon he's, I reckon he's just going to drag this in and check it right up. Tell you what, he's, it's got to be no. well controlled. He's running around. Oh, oh, he has checked it. But he's checked it the other way than what I expected. Yeah. That's actually really hard to control, checking that with pace because the white just gets killed by the check straight away. Especially off these rails, they are to predict, I tell you. That's Playing this tough. off the back of the yellow. This is low percentage, as in it's really tough to get. And That's as good a result as I reckon you could ask for. That's not bad. I had to get, like, had to take that off the back of the, like, the bottom side of the yellow quite thin. It was a really difficult shot to do. Um. What can Robbo do to uh, answer the question? What do you reckon, Pikey? What, well, uh, do you reckon he just like I think, runs up I on think this? I think there is smothers? a three-quarter ball gap behind that red, so I think he might be playing to get up the top and play the yellow down inside that gap. You reckon? Yeah, I've had a look at the table. There's a gap behind there. Oh, he wanted to nudge that over the middle. He's tried to play the Mick Hill touch there and uh, failed. Come up a little short. Yeah, that is what we call in pool world as an error. This is a trade off too sometimes. Like someone like Brett Rogers, for example, would have run into that yellow firm and pushed it right up the top. You know, Robbo's tried to play the controlled shot and come up a little bit short. It's it, it's kind of a trade-off, like, on your style and how you feel as to what's the higher percentage way to go into that. Yeah, it is. I, I think when you're trying to play more touch-based shots, you have to be queuing the ball better. When you're, as you said, if Brett's trying to just push it right up the other end of the table, then you don't have to be queuing as well as long as you make contact fairly full. It's going to go up there. Yeah. Whereas that one, you've got to actually get the pace right, you've got to get the angle right. There's a lot of left hand side. He has took that on full blooded. He's tried to go behind the yellow, obviously, at the other end of the table. Not been successful. This goes in the middle as well, I'm pretty sure. So. Is that Benny Noonan doing that? He's, a, he's on the Robinson? corner ball as well, Jamie. Surely he takes the ball in the middle here. Yep. So Benny, and it was actually funny because Robert, what was he, 6 1 up earlier? Mm. And then he went and did his, you know, uh, patent and toilet break. Robert comes over and we so said something, he goes, and blinking, suddenly you're 6 all. Instead, suddenly this is 9 5. So instead of the 10 uh, 4 confirmation, we've got the 9 5 Dolly part. We have the Dolly parts coming to play, we've got no confirmation. The truck is real filthy. <laughs> And Benny has gone for a Irish bed in the toilet break. Oh, this is breaking news. It must only be really early in the first quarter. So apparently Hawthorne's winning. Second quarter early in the... <laughs> There's that singleton again. And he's still on the winner's side, isn't he? Yep. He got over Scary 11-10 in an epic battle. And there's the Big Guns poster. Still cannot believe I'm not in it with just a headset on. 
<laughs> I don't know how Mick Hill feels about that picture of himself. It's, well, it looks like he's pretty desperate to go to the toilet. But, I mean, he is also twice the size of everyone else on the poster, so he would be... No, it just looks like to me like he wants to just push one out and he's not allowed to because he's got a break. Who's, who's actually, who's the bloke that's feathering on the table just like next to him? Who's that? Ron Kelly. Oh, God, it doesn't even look like him in that picture. And is that Sonny Lister on the very right-hand side there? No, it's Jimmy Della, is it? Yeah, Jimmy Della. Jeez, he didn't get much of a run, did he? <laughs> Jimmy Della. Couldn't be here this weekend. I think he's one of my favourite players to watch, Jimmy Della. Yeah, I like watching him play when he's firing. Oh, look at Trav Travis Crawley's got a berth right in the middle there, a colour a colour shot as well, <laughs> just for being the tournament organiser. I don't think he's gone any good any year in big guns, but he's getting his, he's getting a getting a Guernsey. Simon Singleton's doing what Simon Singleton does and he's going off, potting out. And as I say that, he chops up. <laughs> he's got a position. He's right on the nameplate there. Yeah, that actually couldn't have landed worse for him. Well, he's got a shot on it, I think. Anyway, back to the break. Robbo will hammer this pack. There has been some large breaks. That oh, actually wasn't one of them. That was more the pack that was uh, didn't split well. He I'm hit sure, him well. But... I'm sure he set him up himself. Maybe it was the Ben Noonan toilet break that took his rhythm out of the, uh, of it. Who knows? Can Benny manufacture one here? What do you like, Jamie? Reds? Yellows? Um, I don't really like either, but I probably favour reds. Actually, you know what? This red that's right in the middle just left the black. If that passes the corner, to the corner yeah. and he's getting on it right now. This is a good chance. If he can screw back into the black here, just to nudge that other red right out. Do you reckon he's got angle to do that, or is he going into the yellow above it? It's hard to see. But you know what I mean? If he had just enough angle to flick the edge of it and come out onto the other reds. Yeah, if he punches in that black, the red pushes down, he's automatically on it. Yeah. But if he's, if he's the other way, and he's going into the yellow, if he can just half ball off the yellow delicately, he'll be on the... The little triangle of three, the bottom right one. Yeah. And that will then allow him to open things up. This is uh, probably a key shot here. Yeah, this Jamie. is going just into the black, I've been told by Matty Kerwood. Yeah. And well, that hasn't turned. He's actually overstunned it. Yeah. He's on a double. <laughs> or is he on a cut? Double, I'd say. Yeah, I'd say the double as well. And Matty Kerwood is actually here. Did, didn't play in the tournament because he was too scared. But um, you were he's on, here. You were on the poster too, weren't you, Matty? Were you on the poster? He most, yeah. yeah, Matty gets a Guernsey. Apparently, if you win a world title, you, you get a Guernsey on the poster. <laughs> Apparently, it's allowed. And for those that didn't know, we recently had our Ballarat Singles Championship on, and Matty destroyed me in the final 4 0 in about eight minutes. It was, Eight minutes. It was a pleasure to be a part of getting destroyed like Clearly, that. Clearly, you didn't get the chance to put the clamps on then, Jamie. <laughs> no, he, he did, uh, didn't miss. It was very, very well played. He's come a little bit short there. When I got him back in the handicap snooker tournament we play, only to find out that I've knocked him out and I couldn't even play in it anyway in the following week because I stupidly put it on when the same time this tournament is on. Thanks for that, uh, Ballarat Village and Snooker Association. Good job. Let's put an event on that's the same time as the biggest pool tournament of the year because we don't uh, care about pool. 
That's enough of me sucking about that. Uh, Robbo. Cued that well. He did cue that well. Does he take this firm? Nah, you, after we, like, the way we've been watching these pockets take the ball at, at a bit of pace, you know he's just going to roll it down there. And he has. That is great cover. Yeah, and it, great table knowledge. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I, it, he had zero intention of potting that, in my opinion. Benny's yeah. going to leave him right in against the red, maybe. Robbo won't mind that because, I mean, when you look at yellows, they are all on. What if that, he What if he cuts this and screws back off the second red? I like it. It's, it's low percentage, but hey. if he can get if he can pot it or get some at least some coverage on this bottom left corner. Then he can get back in his frame. As it as the ball's lie right now, Benny can't win. So it's up to him while he's at the table to change that. I think he's just heard you and he said, I'm gonna prove you wrong here, James. Or can you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh not with that shot, he's not gonna. Unless oh, is he on this? He's gonna run through here. Lots of light left hand uh, left hand side underneath. Oh, oh he's picked the gap. Oh my goodness. Oh, Colour me purple and put pitchforks in me face. That's huge. <laughs> pitchforks. Oh, no, I just, I just said whatever came in my head first. That, oh. oh. Wow. Probably rushed at a touch too. Yeah, but he does that. He does. That's <laughs> why he plays. You're right. If he doesn't rush something, then you know there's a problem. <laughs> Surely, Robbo's not going to pop the ball over the hole there. There's too much risk involved with that shot. No, nah, he won't. Might take the one into the middle though. I, I don't see what's wrong with flicking off the top side of the ball into the cushion and just taking a white ball off the table. What a... Yeah. yeah. You don't like that? I don't know. I'm just looking at a few other options, but then I'm telling myself they're no good, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, Robbo's hitting it. He's played the shot at... Oh, no. I actually looked at the double, and the only reason I, w I didn't like the double is if he happened to miss it, it would have given Benny a chance to screw off this uh, ball over the pocket and just get slightly higher the red and give himself a chance to win a frame. But he's now the double now, so it's irrelevant. I think he's out here. Oh, I'm pretty sure he is too. What are you doing? Just a little stun into the black here, Pike? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that. He's not going to play the shit. He's doing that little stupid stance that he does and gets down and not plays a shot. Now he's getting down to commit. It's one of, the, one of those where you got to hit it with a bit of pace, so you've got to be spot on. Probably didn't get the cannon correct. Like, I think he wanted to hit it full, yeah. um, but he'll still be okay with that. Could be worse, he could be right over the top of the black. That's right. I'm pretty sure he'll just screw off the bottom rail here. Yeah. As long as he doesn't land on the bottom rail. And he wants to like just leave hardly any angle at all on his last yellow. Plenty of room. Yeah, that's good. Plenty of room. So black black either in the middle or the same pocket, depending on how he's feeling. I'd say he'll probably play it in the middle, but no, he's gonna play the corner. I think the corner's a better shot. You can sort of oh no, he's playing the middle. I like the corner just because you can get sort of anywhere. And it's you know? There's less that can go wrong too, let's face it. The middle, but he made that look like it wasn't really ever an issue. And less white ball movement as well, just dropping it into the middle. Yeah, that's right. It's amazing how many times you see though, like someone will just drop a ball in play for the middle and they'll just accidentally catch it thick or thin and then the white ball doesn't land anywhere nice. Mm. And suddenly the ball's missable. That's why I'd rather get out of the centre of the table and you know what you're going to be facing regardless. Sometimes the the other way you see people under hit or over hit when they go out to the centre of the table, they end up with a real long black or they end up short and yeah, a little true. bit dodgy. It's, it's a bit of both ways, really. Like you say, depends how you feel. Yeah. Benny's pot a ball, but the spread's not amazing. Jeez, he might take yellows here. Ten to five, eh? Yeah, Robbo going to be tough to beat from here, being on the hill and having at least what five more, uh, sorry, three more breaks. Do we know what the score is on the Singleton Barnett match? Uh, 
Do we know the score on the Singleton Barnett match, Dan? I haven't actually seen this Andy Barnett play before. He looks more like a UFC fighter than a pool player, doesn't he? Solid looking unit. Oh, Benny's going for the extraction. Benny does not mind attacking, does he? Now he's going for the backup extraction. And he's going to need to find a third <laughs> extraction. Here's one. Cut this in the bottom left and straight up the cushion, split them open. But you've got to be on the bad one. <laughs> he's doing it, Jamie. Two. He has played my shot. And oh, he's, what a shot. He's just sort of on it. Simon Singleton is, is leading 7-4 at the moment. He's actually he's actually played that shot a few times and overcut it each time. Yeah. It's funny though, sooner or later, when you have to keep playing crazy big shots, you're gonna miss one. Can't just do it every shot. It doesn't work that way. That's the rusty style though, the Benny style. Like when they Yeah, at some point though they've got to they they regain control of the white ball yeah. and then they then they clinically finish it. Yeah. If you've got to keep doing it seven shots in a row, <laughs> chances are you're not going to make the out. But and if you do, the crowd goes wild. And Robbo, a big chance to finish this match right now. Scary's fighting back. <laughs> Josh Boyle is just ruining this tournament <laughs> match after match by going to deciding frames, slowing the tournament down. Come on, Josh Boyle, you've been banned from next a, year. He's had a few 11 tens. Five and a half hour matches and stuff. It's not on. <laughs> so, Robbo with a big chance to close this out now. Don't, he I hasn't got up high there, nah, has he? his angle's not good. He wanted to come up table a lot more than he did there. Well, he wanted to be a lot straighter on this, so he could just punch it in, then punch the one that's lowest of the three, and then it, it basically just want to play a series of stun shots. Now he's actually got a... Can he screw in behind this red and play it into the opposite middle? Either that, or actually I think that's what he's going to do, Pike. Or, or he's going to try and screw past it. He's clipped it. Or... What do you reckon? You play the, uh, play the ball long and stun into the side of the black? Because even if you push the black another sort of foot across the table, it's fine. You know one thing I I never do, but a lot of people like Scary would take the double here. I just looked at it as he was sort of lining up, and it's yeah, you're right. I don't like taking it on if I don't. I only double a bull if I feel like I have to. But it's the most logical way there, though. You know. Yeah. Sometimes if you can nail that double, the rest of the outcome yeah. becomes simple, and that's exactly what he's just done there. It's a good choice of shot. It only, it's only a bad choice of shot if you miss it and everyone goes, oh, what an idiot taking the double on there. <laughs> You've also... Robbo closes out the match. Benny will move to the loser's side, I believe. Or have they... Yeah, that, that was a winner's side, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, race to 11. So Benny's still alive. Have we got a camera on the singleton match? Sort of. I'd like to know what the score is there. Too. Yeah, I just told you it was 7-5. Seven, 7-5, seven, who's way? Singleton. Singleton 7-5 up on Andy Barnett here. Oh, oh, yeah, he, he's just about ripped his, <laughs> his belt off on the pocket. I hope it was his belt. Putting <laughs> And I don't know how you guys were commentating when Benny put his head in the camera and said, cry me a river. I don't know how you guys missed that. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Well, Robbo missed some ball. Oh, yeah. And, and he says something to Benny, and then Benny goes, oh, yeah, I'd actually, I'd just be devastated about that if I was 8-1 up. <laughs> and then he's just looked in the camera and gone, cry me a river. <laughs> and then Robbo sat down, he's shaking his filthy about something. I don't know what uh, else. I missed it, missed it. Scary's fighting back over there, 6-4, six, 4-6. Four, four, six, uh, I, six, actually, I actually think you'll win the match. I had a feeling that might happen. He is, he is a good fighter, Mick, when oh, it comes mate. to... He, he's a bulldog, mate. He does not give up. 
I've always found when I play him, the further in front you get, the harder he is to beat. Uh, I have had the op opposite experience with him. If he gets ahead of me, I struggle to pull him back in. But if I get ahead of him, because obviously then I get going, um, I go all right. We got the beagle and the bulldog, eh? <laughs> beagle and the bulldog. Tell you what, Singleton's uh, looking like he's going to pot out again. Yeah, I'm, I'm tipping two yellows hanging over the middle bags. Yellow in the middle. It looks like we're going to have the girls on the live stream. Uh, Lauren Jelly versus Colby Pool. And oh, so we've got women's semis and men's semis after these women. So in about four hours, the men's semis will be on. So, <laughs> so after these men's matches, is there only four on the winner's side? So that means as soon as those are complete, they move to the double elimination round is That's removed. Right. That's right. It'll be a straight So we're, we're actually, we might finish this tournament tonight. Incredible. No, I, don't, I don't think so. You don't reckon? No. Because you've got all the loser side matches to catch up to get to that stage That's too. True. Surely they're not going to ask them to play at 9 o'clock tomorrow though. I mean, you've got the hands that qualifying on tomorrow as well. I, I'm assuming they'll have the last four, like the semis, the actual semis of the tournament tomorrow morning. Jeez. At 9am? Well, I don't know whether or it's 9am, but maybe 12 you wouldn't want to be putting these poor blokes on at 9 a.m. after they're playing all day. Rough. Yeah, it'll be more like 12. Simon Singleton has won another frame. What's that make it? 8? Eight? 8-5? Eight eight. Yes, 8-5. <laughs> and I'm going to take a break. The cub back. Once these ladies have started playing. McCartney 6-10, playing Joel McCartney about to break as well. So Joel is on the hill. That's over on the uh, table on the left hand side of your screen at the moment. And McCartney's dry break. Joel comes to the table. Reds look like the ball's over there. Chris Beagley, 7-4 on Scary now. He's an evil snooker there. Andy Barnett stares at it. Stares at the table. What do I do here, he says. Is he... 
ideally he'd like to hit one of the reds up the top and leave a lot of distance. Not easy to find the angle though. He's hit one. It's a good shot. to Singleton take on the corner ball and run into the yellow on the back cushion. Just a nice pace. He's actually played to cover and leave the white tight in there, but the ball's dropped in. He would have liked that yellow to stay up. See the women uh, starting their match there. Leaves a bit of distance again. Singleton may just drop this in pocket weight, I believe. No, he's, he's, he's ran through. That's a good shot. <laughs> 